True or false, you lost 150 pounds. True. Yeah, How? True. Okay. And so, why? Okay, okay. So I lost 150 pounds because I used to be like um, like 470. I used to be like 470, 460, around that range. And for a better lifestyle, to feel better, you know, I looked into um, big um, recently, um, you know, Dr. Sebi. A lot of folks know Dr. Sebi. I look into um, Jehudi Mayat, D Herbs. I went on a um, vegetarian diet. So basically, I cut out all the meats. I cut out all the things that was sticking to me. So I would um, do raw juicing. I would, um, I added in yoga to, you know, help with flexibility, you know, because I wasn't really as flexible. I was always athletic, but not as flexible. So that's what made me going to losing weight. Just looking at, um, you know, how everything has GMO, genetically modified organism, and everything. So that's what was harming me, you know, and when making me my full potential as what I could be, what I thought, you know. So I cut out all the bad foods, all the meats, and went to like raw vegetables, raw um, fruits, you know, raw nuts, raw herbs, taking supplements, you know, everything is organic. So. That was, um, and it helped me, you know, to a point where I used to write, um, well, I don't even have to write anymore. I remember everything, like, I memorized. It helped with my memory, you know. It helped with my thinking. And so that's why I really, um, just after deep researching and um, following some good, you know, herbal teachers, some herbologists, and so that's what made me um, basically end up losing all the weight. And the yoga helped a lot, too. Yoga? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to make sure you weren't saying yogurt. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yoga, okay. yeah, yoga. yoga. Like, okay. um, yeah, yogis, yeah, yoga. So let's break down a, a couple things of what you mentioned, okay? Right. First thing is 470, now, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm 6'8", um, 6'8", six, 6'8". Eight, um, six, eight, six, eight. What's an, uh, an average weight for somebody 6'8"? On um, the average weight, um, if you're looking like sports-wise, is um. Maximum would be like 250, you know, LeBron James is like 256, 8, but he went down to 230, you know, and his um, most was like 260, so around 250 is the max, and 225 is like the, you know, no muscle weight, no, is regular, so 225, And you were pushing 460. 460, 470. Yeah. yeah, big, huge, like, I always been big my whole life, so that's where the big part came in, and so, you know, I always been name. big my whole life. Are other family members as big as you? I'm the tallest of my family, but my granddaddy was um six five. My father is like six three, six four, and my uncle is six six. You know. But weight wise, I mean, are they all big guys too? Yeah, they they broad. You know, they big shoulders, but not as big as me. I was the biggest. I was the biggest. Yeah. How did you get bigger than them, as far as weight? You know, um, just as a kid, you know. Really kind of like, you know, I was always given the food that I asked for, you know, mama can cook greens, she could, you know what I'm saying, and have greens on the side and have all this and still go out and give me a McDonald's hamburger, you know, like that, you know, that's how I got so big to the point where I wouldn't eat no vegetables, I wouldn't eat nothing green, none of that, all I would eat was meat, all I want is McDonald's hamburger, um, KLC, Popeye's this, Popeye's that, and the grease and all that added up, you know, and so, you don't think right. You be clogged up. You be, you know what I'm saying, arteries, all that, digestion, track, everything. And so that's not a great feeling. So just that feeling there, you know, every day I would wake up, look in the mirror, you know, I'm going to change, I'm going to lose this. You know what I'm saying? I would have that willpower, basically, and that mental strength. That's how I did it. Did Were you bullied for your weight and how you looked growing up? It was like, you know, yeah, you know, you're going to get that. Um, here and there, but it wasn't as bad as some people had it because I was always, you know, kind of popular, you know. Everybody always gravitated towards me, so I ain't never had that really bully because, you know, I was always bigger than everybody, so everybody was kind of afraid of bullying me, but I had such a great personality, and so my personality is what made people love me, you know, and so they wouldn't necessarily look at the weight. They'd see me for who I was because of my personality and how I carried myself. You know, I was always the biggest, always, you know, and, but I always carry myself with confidence. I ain't let that hold me back. I ain't let that, like, if it's the finest girl in the room, I still go shoot at her. And being I'm the biggest person, you know, because I had that confidence. And, and ultimately end up getting her, you know, end up getting her number based off my confidence. So that's, you know. I see. So 
at what point did you say to yourself, I need to lose weight? Was Because the reason why I ask is people go through different things, especially sure. health-wise. Like, I know I've done this topic with some people that have lost tremendous amount of weight, and it came to a point where they had to see a doctor, and a doctor told them they were pre-diabetic or something like that, and that caused, okay, hey, we need to start taking this serious. What was it for you? Okay, all right. And being big as I was, I never really had any type of health problem. Only thing I had was high blood pressure. I would go to the doctor, and my blood pressure would be like, um, I don't know what's high for blood pressure, but it was like maybe 180 over something like to the point it was um to the point he say you really can have a heart attack and I don't see how you still regularly, you know what I'm saying, going on. And my blood pressure was so high and they was putting me on these blood pressure medication. And I'm a person that don't like medication, you know, and I like everything organic, raw, you know what I'm saying? I, I, plants, you know, they heal, and I believe that, you know, I'm a firm believer that. So when I was taking these, they had gave me two of them. It was so high, they gave me two blood pressure pills, and I hated it, you know what I'm saying? So that what made me ultimately stop, because I was like, I'm not going to take this for the rest of my life. And I seen how that had my grandfather, you know, like my whole family is, you know, our pills, they pills, like five, six pills in the morning, you know, blood pressure, diabetic, you know what I'm saying, um, nerves bad, anything, you know what I'm saying, just, and I seen what that do, the pills uh, give people nervous breakdown, it'll mess with their mind, and I ain't want that, I ain't want to end up like that. Mm. Now, I have seen research, I have watched documentaries, I have talked to other people, and I've heard, you know, from certain perspectives that when it comes to healthcare, doctors, medicine, uh, the healthcare industry makes money on putting people on medicine. Exactly. Not necessarily getting off medicine. So with what you're saying, it's almost like you're trying to do other things so you don't have to take this medicine anymore instead of being on it your whole life. Exactly, and if you look at it like that, think of it like this. It's just like Apple, it's just like Nike. It's a multi-million, maybe multi-billion dollar corporation. And they make money off sending people back every time, you know what I'm saying? Give you a pill for this, but they not telling you, all right, safe hands, they give you a pill for pain, right? But they not telling you after they give you this pain pill, you're gonna have to get something for your nerves or something for, you know what I'm saying? It, it be for your, if they give you that, and then they charge that and you keep coming back. You get addicted to it. It happened to my mother. My mother had a nervous breakdown to the point where she, you know what I'm saying, couldn't even handle herself because she was taking so many, so many, so many, you know? And so it was like, it's the medicine, you know? And I ain't want to be in that cycle. I want to break that cycle because that's when my whole family, and I feel like that will ultimately kill them, you know, multiple pills a day, you know what I'm saying, blood thinner pills, blood, you know what I'm saying, just for having high blood pressure. This pill give you this side effect, so now you got to take this pill for this side effect, and it just chain reaction, and I don't want to be in that cycle, so that's why, you know. What was the cure to get off that medication? The cure, I would say... Because, like you mentioned, that type of medication you could possibly take for the rest of your life. So what, what was it that you were able to get off where you don't have to take that medication anymore? I would say I started with the walking. I started with the walking. I would um, increase my walking every day. So that, um, you know, that naturally, um, just movement naturally helps the body um, get back to regulation. And so then I would juice a lot. I would say the fruits and vegetables are the key. A lot of greens, a lot of greens, because the greens are detox your body and they'll clean out your body to where it'll lower your blood um, pressure naturally. And a lot of people don't know that because they don't sit down and take the time to, you know what I'm saying, treat themselves and look into it. It basically reading, knowledge, that's what helps. That's like picking up a book, going to Google, researching, because I was big on researching other things. You know, I was always smart, but I was never smart with health. You know what I'm saying? So I changed what I researched. Instead of going on World Star researching the best rapper or researching, you know what I'm saying, what's the newest news, I would start changing up. I would go watch what's, the, what's good for this, what's good for that, what's good at lowering the blood pressure, you know what I'm saying? What's good at purifying the blood pressure? Because a lot of folks don't know, like, when you eat a food, it go right into your bloodstream, and that, um, that impurifies the blood. And so 
with that, they got different fruits and different herbs that clean and purify the blood. And so they don't know that like eating the meats and it put it's toxic. It's toxic. It make your blood toxic. Mm. I see. Now, okay. Uh so you start this regimen where you're walking, you're juicing, you're doing this type of stuff. And how soon did how fast did you see this weight drop? I would say my first month after I started, I lost maybe um, tw um, 20 to um, 30 pounds my first month, you know. And then, you know, slowly it would do like um, 15 pounds after that, you know what I'm saying. So it took me ultimately like maybe a year and a half um, to lose, like or a year and a half, maybe two, you know what I'm saying, maximum. But a year and a half, I would say, to lose the weight, like the 150 pounds. And this is a combination of doing some sort of physical exercise and changing the diet? Correct. Um, I would say, but the only physical exercise I would do, um, you know, body exercise, you know, I would add push-ups in, I would do sit-ups, but mostly with the yoga and the walking. The walking and the yoga, that what mostly did. I would do um, full body yoga exercise, you know, um, I would do the 30-day yoga challenge, like do your yoga. I would do that um, just to get me started into it. And so, yeah, the yoga and the walking, that was the main part of it. And the fruits, yeah. Okay, now... I always hear when people lose weight, they lose the most weight in the beginning. Have you stagnated with the weight loss at this point? Yeah, yeah. Right now, I have stagnated with the weight loss right now. And um, what I have done to... Because you met your goal or just because, like, why? Not because I met my goal, because I still want to lose at least 50 to, 75, um, 50 to 75, you know, more pounds. And... Um, you know, I want to get the zero body percent fat. Uh, I want to get all the way down, you know. But I would say, yeah, I'm at a stagnated point right now. Um, just because, um, I don't know. I, I, um, what I did was, I guess I added more, um, you know, more rice into it. More rice, more, you know what I'm saying? And I stayed at that level, you know, because that was a good level for me, I thought. But now I still want to continue it. But I still, you know, I still stick to it heavy. But I guess I add more rice into it, you know. So you're not getting lazy with your eating habits or your working out and that sort of thing. Nah, 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 not that. So sort you're of still thing. maintaining. Maintaining. I ain't gaining no weight, but it ain't losing as fast. You know, it might be two pounds here, three pounds there. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't as fast, because I guess my body has gotten used to it, the weight loss, you know? And so, and being naturally big, so it's, it's really just slowing, you know? Okay, because I noticed that, you know, some people, when they reach a certain point, you know, the change in the lifestyle can be, you know, overbearing, and hey, this is the, the road we're gonna you know just chill out and enjoy and celebrate and that can be a point where people start to yo uh yo yo yeah and yeah seesaw <laughs> and maybe go back to their old ways or they may start to cheat they get to a certain point they're happy they're you know and they don't keep going with the lifestyle and they get stuck and it's easy to do that it's easy to do that because it's so much temptation around, especially going vegetarian. That lifestyle is so hard to the point to where, I mean, if you come from eating meat, if you come from to the point where I come from, people don't even see it possible. They looked at me like I was crazy, you know, from like being where I'm from, like Mississippi. They looked at me as I, if I was crazy, but when they seen my weight loss, they, you know what I'm saying, that ain't even come to their mind that I went vegetarian. They, Everything other than that. Oh, you had surgery. Oh, you did this. You did that. You know what I'm saying? Not even to think, oh, he can just change his eating habit, change his diet, and add a little walking. I would may, maybe walk two miles at the most a day. You know what I'm saying? But an increase after that if you need to, you know? And so it's easy to get to that yo-yo point. It's real easy. Real easy. Yeah, it's easy. Now... Is this a self-motivated thing? Do you have a support system helping you make sure that you're staying on? I don't know if you use a trainer, or you see a nutritionist, or friends, or family, whatever the case may be. Is this just something you're doing for yourself, or is there people watch? Hey, man, you need to go walk some more. You're getting stagnant. Your weight's coming back a little. Like, explain. 
All right, um, it's basically self-motivated, you know, and I never had a trainer, but I could, I can say that I do go on YouTube daily looking up um, nutritional guys, um, vegan meals, you know what I'm saying? A lot of folks think going vegan is hard, but they really don't understand is it's more fruits, it's more vegetables than it is meat, you know what I'm saying? It's only like maybe five different kind of meats that Americans eat, you know what I'm saying? Americans, you know, maybe five at the most. And some people go off, but it's more fruits and vegetables. It's millions, you know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe not me, but thousands of different fruits, herbs that you can do in different combinations that you can make with them. So you can never get tired of, you know what I'm saying, making dishes and stuff like that. So it's, it was self-motivating, and I did it by YouTubing, Dr. Sebi, um, 13 son i'm just you give me some names out there like um different people like that um jehudi mayat uh, if you don't know he's like an upcoming dr seb he's very great at that herbalist you know um he used with the um co-founder of d herb really the one who the main of d herb then he spread out and got his own thing but cheap prices but i followed those and read their books and different things like that and um really following the um how I got to it was the Islamic community, you know what I'm saying? Not eating pork, not eating like that, and gradually kept reading into it, going farther and farther and seeing what meat does to you, you know what I'm saying? And how it, you know what I'm saying? It toxified the blood, and I, and so, yeah, self-motivated. I seen a documentary uh, that shows, it's called What the Health. Have you seen that documentary um, before? Um, it's a documentary that's on that it's a documentary that's currently on Netflix and it shows a um, direct relationship between people consuming animal products meat and dairy and the cause and effect of cancers diabetes possibly dementia Alzheimer's that sort of thing there's a direct correlation there you chose to be vegetarian. There's a different, and you mentioned vegetarian, you mentioned vegan. There's two different things there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's two different things. But you kind of said both. So, oh, okay, so, so vegetarian, they eat just Cheese. vegetables and fruits, but they also eat dairy products. Dairy, yeah. Which is an animal product. And a vegan person, eater, strictly plant-based, no animal at all. Exactly. No dairy, no animal meat, no seafood. I don't can do some vegetarians eat seafood as well or no is it no just no that that would be a pescatarian okay that's a what pescatarian. I thought pescatarian and I, see and see I was that for the longest before I could go into getting into the vegetarian and then um what I was saying um I ain't mean to um mix it up but I was just saying the vegetarian vegan um combination of foods you can make you know because even if you vegan they still got a lot of combinations because you know they don't use dairy products and so vegetarian they can use the cheese and the Maybe I don't use milk, you know, but I like cheese. I like cheese, so that's why I say vegetarian a lot. I love cheese. That's my one of my things, cheese. <laughs> so you were a full-fledged meat eater. Meat, nothing but meat. No vegetables, no nothing. Don't give it to me. <laughs> then you gradually went down to pescatarian. Exactly. And, which and, is seafood and vegetables and dairy, but exactly. no red meat. No red meat, no red meat at all. No poultry. No poultry. And then you went to vegetarian, which is where you're at now. Exactly. Which is some dairy. Exactly. Some dairy, like cheese. And But I get almond milk. Or I don't really like almond milk either. I like coconut or cashew milk. You know, cashew or coconut milk. I see. But only thing with that, cheese. Cheese. <laughs> like, you know how you get um, the cheese on anything? Like, I might... Um, let's say, uh, I might make a veggie burger. I'm, I'm great at making veggie burger. I make this black bean burger. I gotta have cheese on it, but sometimes I get um get the vegetarian cheese where it's made out that. If I can get to a Whole Food, but Whole Food like you know so far away from me, you know, so I don't get to a Whole Food too much. So cheese. <laughs> I see. Are you trying to eventually be vegan? Yeah, yeah. If I if I can get to a Whole Food every day, I'd be vegan. I'm trying to tell you. If I was right down the street, like if I stay in. Yeah, I'd be easy because they got that. Um, they got the cheese. They got the vegan meat. They got the vegan burritos. Man, they got vegan everything. Then, um, ain't your mama? Yeah, ain't your, Um, I can't think of her name. Um, I think that's what it is. Um, vegan, but she make all the little um, the vegan hamburgers, the vegan everything. 
I can't think of her name. It's un something though. It's un something. I see. <clears throat> no. So just curious on that because you were using both both items there. Um, somebody watching this, uh, thinking about maybe they're borderline, right? I want to become vegetarian or vegan, but I still really like meat. What do you tell a person like that? Let's say they're on the borderline. They're thinking about maybe going to the other side, but they're not, they're not right there yet. All right. I would say to that person, try it out, but try it slowly because, you know, you don't want to just jump into something and you're going to have a kickback, basically. You're going to have a relapse of you're going to want to have meat and it's going to be hard. But I would say start at, if you're 100% meat eater, try within a month and go to 75%. Add 75% meat, 25% vegetables. Then do 50% meat, maybe three months down the line. Once you get used to that, once your body get used to that, add 50% meat, you know what I'm saying? Then 50% vegetables. Then with, to where you can get to 25% meat, 75% vegetables. It might take a little while in that range right there because, you know, some people still need that meat. Then that would probably be your pescatarian stage, you know, when you're eating the fish. And then you basically go to 100% fruits and vegetables because that's all you need, really. It's people out here living off air, breatharians, you know. They don't eat nothing but water. They don't drink nothing but water and breathe and eat air. Breatharians, you know. I've never heard of that. That's real? Yeah, it's real. It's real. The breatharians. Breatharians. They can survive? Yeah, they can survive. They just All they do is um, breathe in the nutrients between the air because, you know, that's basically how we live, through the breath, you know, the breath of life. And a big thing is breath can heal anything. Breathing can heal digestion, can heal mind, can heal anything, like just by breathing. Detoxify the blood, you don't really need air, but long, long as you do your deep breathing, your yogi breathing, that's what they would call it. That's why when you go to yoga, they tell you to breathe, because that detoxify the blood and detoxify the body. So yeah, breatharians, they real, they real. <laughs> uh, that's new, <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> is this a more expensive lifestyle for somebody that's watching this that lives on a budget? Yeah, like that's the hardest thing, I ain't gonna lie. It's like this right here. Uh, a person in my neighborhood, my community, being from Mississippi, I would say they'll be like, um, why would I pay five, ten dollars just getting on maybe um a couple of fruits and a couple of vegetables, you know, when you get a dollar hamburger from McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? Or a four for four from Wendy's, you know what I'm saying? Or Taco Bell, you get the cheap deal at night. And then you gotta think about this. A lot of vegetarians and a lot of vegans, you gotta cook. You gotta cook your food, cause where you gonna go and get it? Ain't no fast food. And so, yeah, it's, it's expensive, and it's really at a disadvantage for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Being like, you know, in poverty situation, savings, all you got is ten dollars left. Why are you gonna spend ten dollars on one vegan meal when you can go get a hamburger from McDonald's a dollar, get some French fries for a dollar? And then you still have eight dollars and go do what you gotta do. You go get on the bus, go go home or whatever you gotta do. Yeah, so it's very expensive. It's like and the thing what I would say with that is when you do go vegetarian, when you do go vegan, your stomach shrinks so you will eat less. You won't be as much as hungry. So instead of paying, you know what I'm saying? You might pay ten dollars, but that ten dollars might last you two days, you know what I'm saying, once you get into it, you know. And so that's what I would say. It'll average out once you start getting into it and you'll start feeling better so it'll be worth it, basically. That's a great investment, you know. Self-help is a great investment. So, yeah, mm. I'm big on that. Knowledge and self-help, you know, health and knowledge. That's the best investment I can, any black person or anybody, and not even just black, any community, you know. I know somebody watching this might be an athletic person and they might, choose to eat meats and stuff like that for protein's sake and f feeling full and bulking up. Can one bulk up and still get the same amount of protein, that sort of thing, with a vegetarian lifestyle? Yeah, um, it's a lot of, um, it's one um, Olympic, um, he's a runner, he's a, um, he's a vegetarian or a vegan at that, and he's bulky, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you can bulk up because the plants all you need is the minerals. 
really not the protein. You know, the protein, they say protein, but in the plants, the minerals have protein. And then they have, um, they have like um, hemp protein. They got the vegan protein. And that allows you to bulk up. But if you really want to bulk up, I would say going vegan, eat a lot of starch. Eat a lot of, not a starch, but like a lot of rice, a lot of brown rice, a lot of black rice. That'll, you know, put some stick on your bones, you know, so that'll let you stock up. But you won't have, you know what I'm saying, you'll be more of lean cut, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. Yeah, you can bulk up real big, you know, but you won't be excess. You know how you got these folks in the gym can't even, like, move their arms? You won't be like that. You know, it's impossible to be that. But you would be like a Picture, um, you'll be like an animal, like a lion, a cheetah in the in the wild. You know how they cut; they ain't got no body fat. You'll be cut. You'll be strong. Yeah, you can buck up. Yeah. Just curious. Um, you mentioned different names, different you know stuff you researched. Obviously, there's good information when you research stuff. You mentioned the internet. There's bad information. True. Yeah. Um, and people can get confused on oh this person said this or this person said that. You know that sort of thing. Is there, out of all the things you mentioned, is there one particular uh, author source. or source or, you know, uh, to make things easy for somebody that's just trying to research or just get into this type of lifestyle? I would say, um, the, all right, I, I got one author. I would say Dr. Sebi. Look up Dr. Sebi because he's like the um, the OG of, he's like the guru of health. So if you're looking up health, look up Dr. Sebi. If you're looking up... Um, you want to look up knowledge, I say look up um, Dr. York if you want to look up knowledge. But if you want to look at it, because he talk about going vegetarian, how you go through it. And, you know, he like the master of knowledge, um, Dr. York. But I would say um, melanindvds.com. Melanin, like the skin, and melanindvds.com. They got all the um, metaphysical teachers, all the herbalists on there, and all the neuroscientists. All the metaphysics, um, the physics, everything, PhD certified, and a lot of um, um, very credible sources. You know, it ain't no um, everything on there is going to be credible, and it's going to have your resources. You can look up; they're going to give you information. MelaninDVDs.com, best source ever, best information I can get anybody. MelaninDVDs.com. 